never forget that day when Jesus washed my sins away. I will never, ever, ever forget the day when Jesus washed my sins away. My family thought I went crazy. Maybe I did. I think I did. I went crazy. I lost my mind, ladies and gentlemen. I lost my life. I died that day, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you what happened. Praise God. We welcome you all to the worship where I am, church. I'm excited about that song I just heard. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed my sins away. Hey, Wes, I know you're on, son, with your precious wife, and you were only about six months old when I got saved. You were only six months old, so you don't remember, but my family said I went crazy. I lost my mind. In fact, when I told them, I said, I'm saved. I'm born again. Jesus came to me and said, I'm renewed. I'm born again. He's forgiven me of all my sins, and I'm, I'm a changed person. I'm not going to be doing this and that anymore. And uh, my precious wife, who was living at that time, she said, you crazy. And she called the ambulance and they put me in a straight jacket. Tammy Nichols, they put me in a straight jacket, put chains on my ankles, chains on my wrist, and took me to the Veterans Administration Hospital in Coatesville, Pennsylvania. You can check the record. They put me in there in a padded cell. Ladies and gentlemen, the walls had pads on them. That's how crazy I was. And they said, no, he's crazy. And ladies and gentlemen, the day I got saved, I heard the voice of Jesus say, son, I'm changing your life. I know you've been a sinner and you've done this and done that, but I've, I've come into your life to give you new life and you're you're my child now and I'm going to change you because I have a work for you to do. Ladies and gentlemen, my family called the ambulance. They put the chains on me, put me in shackles, took me to a, set, a, a padded cell and they kept me in that hospital for 30 days. But it did not take, come on somebody, it did not take Jesus 30 days to change me. He changed me the moment he spoke his word. They say I was catatonic. I didn't even know myself. The doctor told my wife, he won't pull through this. We think you ought to call the funeral director and make arrangements. We don't think he's going to pull through. They said there's a battle going on inside of him. We see a dark force fighting for his life. And then there's a little bit of light fighting in there. There's a struggle going on inside of him, but we don't think he's going to make it. And if he does make it, they told my wife, they said, if he does make it, he won't even know his name for the rest of his life. He will not know his name, ladies and gentlemen. And they told her, you will have to spoon feed him for the rest of his life. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about the day I got saved when they locked me up and put me in a padded cell, put chains on my ankles, chains on my wrists. But ladies and gentlemen, I saw this struggle inside of me. They say I was catatonic. I didn't know what was going on, didn't know where I was. I didn't know who I was or what was going on around me. But I saw this dark figure and he said to me, aha, I got you. I told you I was going to get you. I deceived you and you believe my lie. I told you I was going to get you. You're mine now and you're going to die and you're going to spend eternity in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, then I heard this voice. I saw this white light on the inside of my mind, on the window of my heart. And I heard this voice say, oh, no, devil. Oh, no, he's mine. I saved him. He's mine. He belongs to me. Ladies and gentlemen, the doctor said there was a struggle going on for three days, for three days. During those three days, I saw myself laying in a casket. I saw my family and friends walking around me. Andy McBride, I witnessed this. I saw my friends, classmates walking around my casket. Some were crying. Some were laughing. Some said, yeah, he was a fool. He believed the devil. He did all that drinking, all that womanizing. He lived a, a rotten life. And then I saw them 
lay my casket in the ground. And I saw the, the groundskeeper at the cemetery throw dirt on my casket, ladies and gentlemen. But I heard the voice of Jesus say, you're mine, son. Don't worry about it. You're mine. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. Three days later, ladies and gentlemen, I set up. I set up. They took the shackles off of me. They took the shackles off my ankles. They took the shackles off my wrists. Ladies and gentlemen, my eyes popped open. There was no more pressure in my head. My heart felt light. Ladies and gentlemen, I looked around the room. I saw my wife. I saw my mother, my father. I saw my Sunday school teacher. I saw some attendants in that room. And they looked, they looked bewildered. They couldn't believe that I had popped up and came back to life. Ladies and gentlemen, I sat up and I said, I've been to a horrible place. And I thank God I'm delivered and set free from that place. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord gave me the gift of eternal life, the new birth, salvation. Ladies and gentlemen, I will never forget that day. I still tell the story with passion in my heart. It's so vivid. It's so vivid, ladies and gentlemen. I was, I died, I died, I died in that hospital. I literally died, but the Lord brought me back to life. The Lord brought me back to life and gave me new life. He said, I've got a job for you to do, son. And I just praise God. I just praise God. I just felt led to give my testimony. I had not planned on that. I don't have that written on my sheet. But I just praise God for the opportunity to testify. That is never too late, ladies and gentlemen. It is never too late. If you know somebody who's living in sin or if you're living in sin and you think it's impossible for you to be saved, nothing is impossible for God. So I say, I join with the singers. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed my sins away. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes I go to a church. They don't want me shouting and making a noise in their church. Hey, Tammy Nichols, they don't want me in their church praising God, shouting and, and, and dancing before the Lord. But you can't contain what's on the inside of me. Jesus filled me with the precious Holy Ghost. I've been redeemed from the curse. I've been set free from that life of sin. And so I praise God. The songwriter said, when I get to heaven, I'm going to jump and shout. Ain't nobody there going to put me out. So you keep on shouting, Wes. You keep on shouting, Andy Mac. You keep on praising God. Don't worry about what people will say. Don't worry about what they will think. God is real. He is love. He loves everybody. My friends who are listening in Africa, my friends in Europe, my friends in North South America, let me tell you, God is real. It is no secret what he can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. Matt Borland, it is no secret what God can do. I just praise God. I just thank God. I just believe somebody out there is going through. You're going through a rough time, but I want you to know God is real. He has not forgotten you. Praise God. I want to say to Joyce Mapundo, Pastor Joyce Mapundo in uh, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. You just hold on, girl. You just trust in the Lord. I rebuke that cancer in the name of Jesus. God, reach out your mighty hand and touch Joyce Mapundo in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and heal her and deliver her from cancer, God. I just praise you, Lord. I just praise you, Lord. I just thank you, God. Oh, God, you're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. Lord God, stretch forth your mighty hand today and heal the sick. Deliver those who are bound. God, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus to worship you and to praise you. 
Lord God, stretch forth your mighty hand. Reveal yourself to Matthew Borland. Let him know that you've got everything in your hands, God. Everything he needs, you've already supplied. So help him to walk by faith, God, and not by sight. Lord, we lift up our listeners and viewers, God. Whatever problems they're going through, we bind those spirits that have come against them. We bind every power, every principality, every ruler spirit, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. And we say, people of God, be loose, be set free in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree in the name of Jesus, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. I believe somebody needs to hear that. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. We come against the spirit of sickness, disease, and foul infirmity. We come against arthritis. We come against cancer in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of poverty, lack, and want in the name of Jesus by the authority of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stretch forth your mighty hand, Lord God, and we bless you. We bless you. We praise you, Lord, and we thank you. Now, Lord, give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, and we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. I hadn't thought about preaching uh, so soon in the service, but the anointing came upon me. The Spirit of the Lord came upon me, ladies and gentlemen, and had to throw the agenda aside. The Spirit of the Lord came upon me. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. And the same Spirit, the Holy Ghost, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives inside of you, believer. He lives inside of you. He knows what your need is. He knows what you stand in need of. He knows what to do. He knows when to do it, and he knows how to do it. Walk together, children. Don't you get weary. I say walk together, children. Don't you get weary. There's no problem that God cannot solve. I wonder, can I get a witness? There's no problem that God cannot solve. Call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. He will show up. He will show up. A lot of you are going through difficulties. It's the Christmas season. Many of you don't have the things you want, the money you need, but it's not about money. Jesus is the reason for the season. It's all about Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Magnify the name of the Lord. You might not have two slices of bread, to put together. You might not even have a spoonful of jelly or peanut butter, but just lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Jesus. Say, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Lord God, we know that there are some people here who are going through sickness, got sickness in their body. Many are lonely. Many are depressed. Many are uh, uh, feel guilty because they can't give gifts to people. But, oh, God, help them to give the gift of love. Help them to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. That's the best gift they can give anybody, to tell somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness. And we thank you and we bless you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, praise God. We thank God for this new day. We thank God for this new day. I'm trying to settle down. I'm trying to settle down. But the greater one on the inside of me says, keep on, keep on exalting my name. Keep on praising me. Keep on glorifying my name. That's what I made you for. You were made fearfully and wonderfully to worship the Lord. So there's no reason, ladies and gentlemen, for you to be looking sad today. There's no reason to be downhearted. The Bible says weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. You just hold on. You just hold out. You just wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The scripture says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. I see somebody online from Ohio. She's waiting on the Lord. I see somebody online from Connecticut. He's waiting on the Lord. I see folks in Pennsylvania waiting on the Lord. I see Linda Barrett, Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, waiting on the Lord. I see somebody in Kenya waiting on the Lord. I see somebody in Botswana waiting on the Lord. You just wait. You just wait. You just wait. Don't give up. I see Joyce Mapunda in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, waiting on the Lord. Pastor Bill Abraham, go and lay hands on her in the name of Jesus. Wait on the Lord. God will come through. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not a man that he should lie. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you. Set your affections on Jesus Christ. Keep your mind on the Lord. We know it's the Christmas season. The world has stolen the meaning of Christmas. It's all about money and gifts and material things. But ladies and gentlemen, to the believer, to the believer, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He sent Jesus into the world to live as a human being. For 33 years, he lived as a human, gave his life for us hung and bled and died on the cross, was buried. On the third day, he arose from the dead. We thank God for the Advent season, for the Christmas season, that God so loved us that he sent his son. Not an angel, not a, not a seraphim, not a cherub. He sent Jesus, God himself, God the Son, entered into this world to die, to die for you and for me. I met him that day, July 20th, 1969. I met him. I met him. People laughed and people said, he's crazy. He done lost his mind. Perhaps that was so. But when I came out of it, I had a new mind. I had a new heart. I had the mind of Christ in me. I had a heart of, of flesh. God took away that cold, stony heart and put his heart in me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can endure persecution. You can take it when they laugh at you. You can take it when they put you out. You just keep your mind on Jesus. Keep on praising God. Be like shouting John. Be like shouting John. When you go to the church or where if you go to the mall and you start praising God and they want to put you out, you just say to somebody, here, deacon, hold my mule. And you let them hold your mule. You just shout and praise God because that's what you were made for. You were made to shout and praise God. God gave me a song that the angels cannot sing. He gave you a song that the angels cannot sing. Nobody can sing your song but you. So when they try to put you out of their uh, establishments, you just tell somebody, here, deacon, hold my mule. And you just just get free. Just get free and give God, give God some praise. Give him hallelujah praise. Give him the high praise. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. You might have not have money to pay your electric bill. You might not have a house to live in. You might not have a car to drive. You might not have a job to go to. But don't you get weary. Don't you get depressed. God knows your needs. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. God knows your heart. He knows your need. And he said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Praise God. My God shall supply all of your needs. Amen. And God is not a man that he should lie. Try him. Try him, ladies and gentlemen. Stretch out on faith. Tell him you're going to wait on him. No matter how long it takes, you're going to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Help is on the way. I know I'm talking to somebody. Help is on the way. Facebook family, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Don't run to the politician. The politician can't help you. Don't run to the Republican Party or the Democratic Party or the appendants. Hold uh, uh, hold out, hold out your light, you heaven bound soldier. Hold out your light, 
you heaven bound soldier. Hold out your light, you heaven bound soldier. Let your light shine around the world. Wait on the Lord. The scripture says in 2 Chronicles 16, 9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on the behalf of them whose hearts are perfect toward him. God's eyes are running around the whole earth, ladies and gentlemen. God is looking for somebody, Matt Borland. He's looking for somebody to bless right now. His eyes are running to bless somebody whose heart is perfect to the Lord. That does not mean that you're a perfect person. It means that your heart is trusting in the Lord, that you see Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you believe that all your help comes from the Lord. <clears throat> so God's eyes are seeking. He's coming down your street. He's getting ready to ring your doorbell. Or if you don't have a house to live in, he's going to sit right next to you on that street corner or under that tree. He's in Kenya. He's in Botswana. He's in Russia. He's in North Korea. He's in Afghanistan. He's in Israel. Wherever you are, God's looking. He's looking. He's looking. He's looking. Is there anybody expecting God to show up? You must expect God to show up, ladies and gentlemen. Don't lay there and 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 uh, take that sickness. Don't just lay there and die. You just uh, magnify the Lord. Tell God you have the faith. No matter what the doctors say about you, doctors told my wife, he'll be a vegetable for the rest of his life. He'll be a vegetable for the rest of his life. He won't even know his name. You'll have to spoon feed him. Ladies and gentlemen, that was over 45 years ago. Come on, somebody. And I'm preaching the gospel by the grace of God. I'm preaching the gospel filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Experiencing divine health. 75 years old, ladies and gentlemen. 75 years old and still preaching the gospel. 49 years ago, the doctor said I would not make it. But the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. And in your situation, ladies and gentlemen, the devil is a liar. There is nothing impossible for God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, bless God. Bless God. Greetings, everybody. And welcome to the Worship Online Church, the Back to Basics Online Church. Praise God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. I'm so glad to be with you. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. I'm on fire, on fire for Jesus because I thank God. I thank God for who he is. God is love. God is love. He didn't have to save me. He didn't have to save you. We could have died in our sinful condition and we would be in hell right now, burning forever and ever. But thanks be to God for his grace and his mercy. We don't deserve his love, but his grace and mercy. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have time to hate anybody or be angry with anyone, but let's love them. If somebody offends you, forgive them. Forgive them. If they mistreat you, forgive them. For Jesus hung on the cross and he said to God the Father, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. And forgive anyone and everyone who has offended you in any way. Forgive just as Jesus forgave you. And God will bless you. He'll bless you with excellent health, eternal life. He'll provide every need you have. Praise God. He'll, he'll open a job for you. Once I prayed for a brother and God moved an entire industry into Chester, Pennsylvania, so that this brother could get a job. God told me I moved a new industry into town so Brother Ralph can get a job. So you go tell Ralph to go and see a certain person and ask him for a job. Ralph went up there and said, they hired me. I said, yes, because the Lord provided that job. God brought that industry into town so that you can get a job. Ladies and gentlemen, don't underestimate God. Don't underestimate the power, don't underestimate the power of the Holy Ghost. Don't underestimate God's love for you. You are important. Satan might have beaten you down. 
Drugs may have gotten you down. Lust may have gotten you down. Adultery may have gotten you down. Fornication may have gotten you down. Whatever thing Satan put on you may have beaten you down, but the story ain't over. It's not over. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you've got to tell somebody that message, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to tell them. You've got to tell them about the grace of God. You've got to spread the good news. You've got to go into all the world teaching and preaching the gospel. You've got to tell your family. You've got to tell your neighbors, your co-workers, God loves you. And he's got a plan for you. Put your trust in Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, when people put their trust in Jesus, it is no secret what God will do. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Today, I want to talk about the lying preacher. I want to talk about the lying preacher. We're finishing up part three, and I'm only going to take a couple minutes. Now, you know, you know, when the preacher says, I'm only going to take a couple minutes, you know, he ain't going to take a couple minutes. But we're going to talk about the lying preacher today. The lying preacher today. Uh, uh, we're going to talk about that lying preacher as we finish part three of our series on how to recognize false prophets, how to recognize false prophets. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this series. We thank you for your word. Thank you for your for your love. Thank you for all of your people who are listening in. We thank you, Father. We thank you that you're blessing and moving in their hearts. Lord, help them to receive this message today. Anoint this your servant to share it. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Turn with me, will you please, or download 1 Kings chapter 13. Download 1 Kings chapter 13. We're only going to spend a few minutes with this message, and I'll make it short and sweet, praise God, because I've already preached, And uh, but there's more. The Holy Ghost is, is, is all inside of me, amen, but we're not going to belabor you with a whole long message today, praise God. First. Kings chapter 13, we want to talk about the lying prophet or the lying preacher. Our series is on how to recognize false prophets. I gave you over the last couple of weeks a list of up to 25 ways in which you can recognize false prophets. And I want to say to Wes Carter, my son out there, hey, Wes, no, I'm not going to review the whole list. Wes said last week, Dad. When you were mentioning uh, you had 40 uh, things to say and, and you're on number 20, he said, I, I started to take a little break. <laughs> well, you're funny, man. You're funny. I started to take a break too, man. But we're not going to go over that long, ex exhausting list. But just get the, the videos from the last two weeks and learn what we taught about uh, how to recognize false prophets. We want to say this. There are many prophets, many preachers, and many believers. They start off good. They start off in faith. They start off trusting the Lord. But somewhere along the line, they yield and cross over to the dark side. Many, you know many people who started this journey, and they've dropped out. The Bible says, if any man having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is not fit for the kingdom. My heart will have no joy in him. So ladies and gentlemen, if you know anybody who's turned back, go to them, call them, ask them, beg them, repent, return to the Lord. Talking to you, many of you church dropouts. You don't go to the brick and mortar church anymore, but let this online church be your link to God as we encourage you in the word of God. Many people have been deceived by the church. Many people have been run out of the church. Many people are tired of the okie doke. Many people are tired of the commercialism, the greed for money. But don't tire of your love for Jesus. And don't break your fellowship with Jesus. You may not be attending the brick and mortar church, but attend Jesus Christ. Study your word. Develop a prayer room in your house. Have an altar in your house. 
a place where you go before the Lord. Teach your family how to pray. Gather your family together. The family that prays together stays together. Study your word. Worship God. You may not be going to church, but worship God in your heart. Because God promised never to leave you nor forsake you. <clears throat> and he doesn't want you turning your back on him. Ladies and gentlemen, to deny Christ means there's no eternal life. So hold on to Jesus with all your heart. In 1 Kings 13, the scripture says, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Verse 2 of 1 Kings 13, And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about a good prophet. God raised him up in Judah, sent him up into the northern kingdom of Israel, where Jeroboam had led the people away from God. The king of Israel, Jeroboam, was so jealous of his kingdom, and he did not want the people going into Jerusalem and befriending King Rehoboam. And so Jeremiah, Jeroboam, Jeroboam devised a scheme to keep the people in the northern kingdom out of the southern kingdom and out of a friendship with Rehoboam, realizing that all of Israel, all of the Jews were supposed to go to Jerusalem to worship God at the temple there. But Jeroboam decided he had a better idea. Ladies and gentlemen, beware of false prophets. Beware of false preachers. Beware of false people. There are so many people who think they have a better idea than God. We're talking about the lying prophet today. And so this good preacher, this good prophet, this obedient man went to that altar where Jeroboam had made two golden calves, two golden calves. He told the people, now this is your God. You don't have to go to Jerusalem anymore. This is your God. Jeroboam built a temple and housed those two golden calves and told the people of Israel, this is where you will worship. This is your God. What an abomination. Ladies and gentlemen, people are creating abominations all over Christendom. Many churches no longer worship God. There are churches that practice witchcraft. There are churches that practice sex, engage in sex, practice drugs and homosexuality, adultery, lesbianism. Ladies and gentlemen, people are putting their own twist on Christianity and they're deceiving many people. Be careful who you follow, ladies and gentlemen. I say be careful. Now, here's this good prophet. He was obedient and he cried against that altar that Jeroboam had made, and he spoke to that altar and said, false prophets will be burnt on you. They will put the false prophets on you, altar, and you will burn them up. And ladies and gentlemen, 348 years later, when Josiah became king of Israel, Josiah tore down those temples and groves and high places and altars and unholy places. Jeremiah rounded up all the temple prostitutes, the adulterers, the lesbians, the gays, the sodomites. The scripture says he rounded up all the sodomites and put them to death and, and tore down all those high places, those places of worship that people had begun, begun worshiping idols, and made a mockery of God, Josiah, the last of the, 
good kings of Israel, clean house. And he burned, he burned the false prophets. He put them, burned them on the altar, that very same altar that this prophet went to and cried and, and, and cursed that altar. This was a good prophet, ladies and gentlemen. He obeyed God. God sent him from Judah up into Is Israel, and he cried against that altar. Ladies and gentlemen, we need people who are going to obey God and cry against Satan's altars. We need people, even in our churches, who are going to cry against abomination. We've got the, we need people who are going to cry against those things that do not glorify God. Cry against a lot of those sacrifices. Uh, People, those so-called sacrifices people are making in the church, all those programs, all those uh, 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 times when they lift up pastors and promote pastors as though pastors are gods. Ladies and gentlemen, we need people who are going to cry against the false prophets in the church. And so this man of God was so obedient to the Lord. But ladies and gentlemen, even... And you've got to be careful. Even good preachers, good prophets can turn bad. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan is working 24-7 against every believer. He's doing all he can to pull you down. He's going after the preachers, the prophets, the heads of the church. If he can get the head, he can mess up the whole body. If he can get the husband, he can get the whole marriage. If he can get the head of the household, he can take down the whole family. So you've got to be alert. You've got to know Jesus. You've got to not let anything separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Well, to make a long story short, this prophet who had been obedient to God uh, went on his way in Israel, heading back to Judah, and God told him, God spoke to him, ladies and gentlemen, you must hear this to understand this story. God said, don't go to anybody's house. Don't stop anywhere. Don't eat any food in this country. Don't drink any water in this country. Don't go with anyone. Those were the instructions. Ladies and gentlemen, I have wrestled with this story for so many years about the what happened to this good prophet. Even a good prophet can turn bad. Listen to this. There was an old prophet who heard about this young prophet who cried against the altar in Bethel in Israel. And the old prophet asked his sons, where is this young prophet? I want to meet him. And the sons told him where the young prophet was. And the old prophet said, saddle my donkey. I'm going to go visit with him. And so the old prophet rolled up to the young prophet. And he said, come to my house. I want you to break bread with me. I want to feed you, put you up for the night. I want to fellowship with you. Come to my house. And ladies and gentlemen, the young prophet said, God said for me not to go to anybody's house, not to eat anybody's bread, not to drink anybody's beverage, but to come straight home. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says in 1 Kings 13, the old prophet lied to the young prophet and said, an angel of the Lord appeared to me. That's why I'm here. The angel of the Lord appeared to me and told me to ride to you and to tell you that it's all right for you to come to my house, break bread with me. Ladies and gentlemen, this young prophet, please listen to this, who heard the voice of God for himself and knew what God's plan was. God told him not to go to anybody's house not to drink anybody's beverage, not to eat anybody's food. The young prophet, because the old prophet said, the Lord appeared to me. The angel of the Lord came and spoke to me 
and said, it's all right for you to come to my house because I'm a prophet just like you. He lied, ladies and gentlemen. He lied. He lied to the young prophet. And the young prophet went to his house and ate food, broke bread with him, spent the night there. And God spoke to that young prophet, the very prophet who prophesied at the altar and 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 condemned that uh, activity in Bethel, who spoke the word that men will be offered on you altar because of your abomination. That young prophet disobeyed God. And so in the morning, the young prophet left, was riding on his donkey, going back to Judah. And a, a lion came out of the bushes and ate and, 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 and killed him. Didn't eat him. He killed him. And passersby saw the young prophet laying on the ground, a lion standing next to him, and the donkey next to the lion. The lion didn't eat the donkey didn't kill the donkey. He killed the prophet. A good prophet, ladies and gentlemen, one who obeyed God. He had obeyed God by going up to, into Israel. But God wants us to obey him in all things, ladies and gentlemen. You can't put your guard down, ladies and gentlemen. You can't even trust some of these so-called prophets, bishops, preachers, Everybody who says he's a prophet may not be a prophet. That old man who said, I'm a prophet just like you. And God appeared to me and told me to tell you, it's all right to come to my house because I'm a prophet just like you. That caused that young prophet's death. Cut his ministry off quickly. Cut his life off. Because a young prophet disobey the Lord. I've wrestled with this passage of scripture for a long time. And I've often said, Lord, why did you let this young prophet die? He was deceived by an older prophet who told him a lie. And God's telling me, you need to know my voice. And when you hear my voice, obey what I tell you. And don't let anyone persuade you otherwise. And I share this with you, ladies and gentlemen. I lay this out to you. Learn to discern the voice of God for yourself. Don't depend on anyone else's voice. And God's also saying there are a lot of lying prophets out there who are using any means necessary to deceive people, to manipulate people, to use people for their own purposes. And the churches are full of them, ladies and gentlemen, full of them. And I want to caution you, as the Lord cautions me, don't let anybody deceive you. Know God's voice for yourself. And I want to uh, uh, add, add, add this commercial. As the dean of the Paul Begley School of Prophecy, we offer a course called Communion with God. Ladies and gentlemen, this course is changing people's lives. We've got people online with us right now who are taking this course, and this course is changing their lives. They're learning how to hear from God for themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you're in school, you're in school or not, whether you're in church or not, learn God's voice. Learn how to fellowship and commune with God. Know his voice, study the Bible, pray, spend quality time with God so you know his voice so that nobody, whether it's the Pope or the bishop, your wife or your husband, your pastor or the first lady, nobody can turn you around. Know God's voice. And when God speaks to you, obey him. And if you disobey God, be quick to repent. Be quick to repent. Don't let the sun go down 
without you repenting. This young prophet woke up. God told him, you will not see your fathers. You will not be laid in your father's sepulcher. You won't even be buried in the same graveyard with your father. Because he disobeyed God and the lion killed him. Ladies and gentlemen, he was deceived. This great man of God who, who obeyed God and, and, and prophesied about the destruction of the satanic, abominable kingdom in Israel. This prophet met a gruesome death because he, after all the time he obeyed God, he disobeyed God in what looked like a little thing, but there's no little thing with God. Obey his voice. I want to encourage you, study your Bible, pray, fellowship with God, worship with God. Don't let anybody separate you from God. Don't let anybody tell you things contrary to the word of God. You test the spirit by the spirit of God. Anything someone tells you, you must test it by the word of God. I beg you, I beg you, ladies and gentlemen, Know God's voice. Get to know God's voice. Take the quality time. Don't be so busy in your life that you can't take time to pray and talk to God and learn how to listen for God's voice. And I invite you to come and enroll in our course, Communion with God. You'll see you'll have a life changing experience. We pray that you'll be diligent, be faithful, be vigilant. Don't let anybody steal your crown. Well, praise God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter at the Back to Basics Online Church. I want to offer an opportunity in the name of Jesus that if you're listening in and you're not saved, ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and receive him by faith today. And then I want to encourage each and every one of you, be faithful to God. Don't let anyone steal your crown. Don't let anybody rob you. Don't let anybody manipulate you. Be alert to the false prophets and know when to cast down those vain imaginations. Take your stand for Jesus. Anything God tells you, you do it. I don't care if the whole world goes against the word of God. I'm going to stick with what the Lord tells me to do. If the whole world changes and decides they're going to go this way, I'm going to go the way the Lord leads me with the help of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, with the help of the Holy Spirit, Dr. Andrew McBride says that's old time religion. Give me that old time religion. Give me that old time religion. It was good enough for my mama. It was good enough for my grandmama. Give me that old time religion where people obeyed the word of God. Do not disobey the word of God. Don't let God cut you off because of disobedience. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I repent for any time I've ever disobeyed you. And I repent, God, on behalf of the people for any time they have disobeyed you. If there be anyone here who's walking in the wrong direction, turn us around. Holy Spirit, give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you, that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. We praise you, God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Keep us, Lord, we pray, because you are our only hope. You're the only hope we have, and it's in Jesus. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Get in touch with me, if you will. Send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at Yahoo.com. Hit me up on Facebook or give me a call, 404-205-1101. We'd like to talk with you, pray with you. We'll never ask you for your money. We just want to make sure you're drawing near to God. See you later, Facebook family. We're going to uh, shut you all off at this time. We'll catch you next week. Praise God. We're going to stop our recording.